welcome to the complete disassembly guide of the 2020 M1 Mac Mini. I picked up this refurbished model for just under $600 on Apple's refurbished store. Um, so this is probably the best value per computing unit that you will ever find on an Apple product for a long time. To open it up, simply flip it upside down and you will be encountered by this black disc. Simply pop a credit card or any thin piece of plastic in there and it'll pop right off without a problem. You're going to want to remove the uh, six T4 screws on there and then you can pop this metal grit off. And uh, be careful because there is a small wire attaching that little black hockey puck to the logic board. You can just pop that off with a little fingernail. And then after that's popped off, you'll take that same T4 screw driver and uh, undo a little metal uh, holding pin there. And once that's off, you can uh, set that to the side or take a quick look at it. Uh, that is the little Wi-Fi puck that has the Wi-Fi antenna, um, which your Mac uses to access the internet. After that, we can uh, simply take a quick look at the inside of this very empty Mac Mini. It was very obvious that Apple could have made this uh, chassis a whole lot smaller if they wanted to, but for some reason they didn't, probably to save on costs. And oh, it looks like I hadn't taken off the little black plastic cover over the ports. Let's take that off and uh, get a quick look at those beautiful ports. Um, yeah, there's really nothing in there. It's just a complete empty void. Probably only about 40% of it is uh, full of computer. The rest is just empty air, which is great for thermals. So now we're going to remove uh, the fan using that same T4 screwdriver. And there are four screws. Two of them are at a 45 degree angle. And once you get that out, it'll pop right off. But you'll also be encountered by another ribbon cable, which uh, you'll want to very carefully uh, slide out. I say very carefully. I'm more cautious with these little cables because I've broken them in the past, but as long as you're not tugging on them like a gorilla, they should come out without a problem. So this uh, this is just me being overly cautious with a little card. You don't really need to. I end up just uh, yanking it out with my finger, um, as I do right there, and it works just fine, so don't worry about that. So that is the, uh, that is the fan assembly, just a single fan, uh, not very big. Um, now we're going to use a, a TR6 screwdriver and remove uh, the two mounting uh, screws that are actually mounting the logic board into the Mac Mini case. These are on there with a lot of torque, so you uh, do have to get a little bit of elbow grease in there. Once you're done with that, you can uh, disconnect the power supply from the logic board. Um, before you can do that, actually, you have to take out this little black piece of plastic here, which is slowing me up. But uh, once you get that off, you'll see this is just a little connector that just pops out. Uh, if you get your thumb right in there and thumbnail and just uh, kind of slide it out back towards the front of the Mac Mini. You'll also notice while we're up on this close-up, there is a little uh, LED indicator light strip that will also need to get taken off here in a moment. Um, but yeah, so now we got uh, both the power supply and the LED indicator out. We can side the whole logic board assembly out by pushing on the heatsink. Do not push like a gorilla like I just did there, because I just uh, popped that whole thing out into my lap. Uh, thankfully it's pretty durable, so I don't think I caused any long-term issues, but do be a little bit gentle because that's just held on by a couple little screws. You can see the entire logic board here is really, really small. Um, we just have uh, the two sides there, and uh, looks like a speaker and a power sink. We'll get into that in a minute. First, let's get the uh, let's get the whole power uh, <laughs> power uh, supply out. You'll notice that there is a, a small silver. Uh, case, I guess, over the uh, power supply outlet thingy that you can slide off. There's also this little pin that you need to pull out with a little pair of tweezers or something. Um, don't let it slide into the bottom of the Mac Mini case like I did, because then you might not see it again. There's one more uh, T4 screw, and then the whole assembly will slide out after you twist the power supply knob uh, counterclockwise by about uh, 90 degrees, and the whole thing will just slide out just like that. And uh, it's a pretty compact power supply for a desktop, especially one with uh, this much horsepower. Obviously the M1 chip has a lot to do with that. Inside the case, you'll notice the only thing remaining is the LED indicator light strip and some cable management plastic. Um, I'm not going to remove those, but if you wanted to, they're kind of glued in there, so you'll have to uh, use some uh, hot glue remover. Uh, the power supply is uh, just over uh, six and a half inches long at its narrowest point and just over two inches uh, wide and about one and a quarter inches thick. So pretty compact little power supply, impressed by Apple for fitting uh, that whole power supply for this computer inside the box. 
Now for the logic board, uh, as again I mentioned, this thing is absolutely teeny tiny. It's about uh, four inches by about five and a half inches, um, which is just insanely crazy considering how much power the M1 chip has. Uh, now we got uh, zoomed in a little bit more. Let's take off the speaker here. It's just two simple uh, T4 screws that just pop the speaker off. You'll notice there are two little uh, cable prongs that are connecting it. You can just pinch it out with your finger. I end up doing that in a second here because it's just faster. And uh, yeah, there you go. So that's the whole speaker for the entire Mac Mini. Kind of funny to think um, there's so much free space inside this computer that they decided to stick the world's smallest speaker on it. Um, Mac Mini speaker quality is nothing to write home about, but I guess it does the job. On the other side, we're going to remove the uh, cover for the heat sink. And so uh, to do that, we need to remove the power button uh, assembly uh, ribbon cable here. So we'll go ahead and disconnect that just by pulling it out carefully. And then after removing those four screws on the bottom, there are another four screws on the side right here uh, that we're going to want to remove. And after that's done, we'll notice that we can just easily pull off the power, uh, not power, heat sink uh, cover right here. And we'll be able to see uh, that that is basically nothing. It's just a thin piece of aluminum with some cool vents and grills coming up right there. All right, next we want to remove the uh, faceplate here which is uh, already disconnected uh, from a screw perspective, but we do have a, a Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth antenna cable that we do need to disconnect. You just use your thumb and pop those out. Uh, just a little thumbnail ought to, ought to take care of that. There are little uh, holder clamps in there, those little silver pieces. You wanna disconnect those uh, before trying to remove it, like I didn't do right there, but you can just pop it right out. And uh, there you go. So that's the uh, whole faceplate, which includes some of the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna and uh, just a nice cover for the back end of the logic board. So now on to the main event. Let's see that M1 chip in all its glory. Flip it over and uh, remove these four screws which are held in by these little springy plates. And when you take up the logic board, you will notice the heatsink falls away, revealing the beautiful M1 chip with integrated RAM. Uh, the looks like some kind of Apple custom Apple silicon chip down there for maybe like a T2 equivalent. But uh, anyway, that is the uh, that is the Apple M1 chip. You can also see up there the two silver uh, uh, chips at the top are my SSDs. They are all pretty tightly integrated into this teeny tiny little package. Bravo to Apple for getting an entire supercomputer into this itsy bitsy little space. This is the uh, heat sink. Last thing we'll look at here. Uh, it's just a piece of machined aluminum it looks like. Maybe it's a different metal, I don't know, but it's a pretty lightweight for its size. And uh, yeah, that is the uh, total size of the M1 Mac Mini's logic board. Again, coming in just under four, uh, just under four inches by uh, just over five and a half inches um, at its thinnest point and then six inches at its thickest point. Thanks so much for joining me for this M1 Mac Mini teardown. I've been Nick. You didn't really care. Have a nice day.